On this episode of South Hall Computing, we'll be flashing a Cisco E3000 with the DDWRT firmware and as well as the Tomato firmware. And that's coming up next. Warning. The following video is performed by a trained professional. It is meant for educational purposes only. Please do not attempt to try anything you see here. Enjoy. Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hawk Computing here today and we're going to be doing a DDWRT and Tomato firmware upgrade for this router here. So without further ado, let's get right to it. So the first thing I forgot to mention is make sure that you have a short cable plugged in to your router to the back of your desktop over there like we do and also make sure it's not plugged into the WAN port you want any of the other ports one through four on this model here and definitely not the one labeled internet so let's get on to the web browser okay so we're on our machine now the router's hooked up to the desktop here that we got in the lab so first thing we need to do is go to your favorite web browser this one is happens to be chrome and we're going to go to the router's ip address the default one is going to be 192.168.1.1 oh hello camera setup get away and we're going to hit enter going to need a username and password so the default one is admin admin now don't want you to say my password so basically in the lab here we have greater success when we do the ddwrt firmware first and then followed by the tomato so we're going to do the initial flash file here for this guy by going to sorry administration and we're going to go to firmware upgrade and I happen to have it on a folder on the desktop here so I'm going to hit choose go to my desktop and it's going to be in a folder called firmware now as you can see here we have the initial flashed firmware let's get this a little bit bigger here which is three megs and we're gonna do that right now so click start upgrade and give this five minutes Now that it's been pretty much five minutes, what we're going to do is physically unplug the router here. So I'm going to do that right now off camera. Give it a good 30 seconds. And wait another five minutes. Now that we waited another five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and try to hit continue, see if it takes us to the router. It says it does, so let's log in with admin, 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 admin. Okay. Let's try erasing that URL and going straight to the source, perfect. So, now we have DDWRT on our system here. Let's see if we can go to the administration here admin admin now if you find yourself in a situation where <laughs> it seems that there's a password on your router after the firmware installation what you're going to have to do is grab the router itself and hit the reset button so we're going to hit that reset button over here it's that nice red one i'm going to get myself a pen and we're going to press it for about three seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. All right, about four sec, four seconds. And what you want is that light to start blinking when you've successfully reset the router. So once you've successfully reset the router, we're going to go ahead and try to log in again. There we go. That's what we're looking for. You want to clear out this. I'm just going to do the standard admin, 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 change, 
voila, there you go. We've actually successfully logged into the DDWRT firmware on this E3000. Now right off the bat you're noticing that I'm not using the latest version. Well, I found the newer versions tend to brick these routers more often, so I'm sticking with an older one that I know works, but it's the mini version. So I also downloaded a larger version here, so let's go ahead and upgrade it. And I'm going to go to Administration, Firmware, and here I'm going to select Reset the Default Settings, and I'm going to choose my file, which is in my firmware here, and notice how I had the mini version that was only 3.5 megs, where this one is almost 8. So let's go ahead and flash it, and we'll give it another 5 minutes. Now that we waited about five minutes, as you can see, we have to re-enter all the info. So we're just doing admin for all three for this test. And voila, as you can see, we have the bigger version of DDWRT for this firmware. Okay, so now that we have our DDWRT firmware nice and installed, time for Tomato. So we go to administration here. We go to firmware upgrade, we're going to select reset to default settings, choose file, and I happen to be partial to the Shibi tomato mod, so that's where I'm getting this file here, the latest version for the E3000, saying open, and we're going to hit upgrade, and we'll give it five minutes after it does the initial install, so we'll be right back. Okay, so we've given this router enough time here. We're gonna try to log into it. Sometimes this will not work. And pretty much, yep. So what we're gonna have to do is hit the reset button here. So all we have to do is grab the router and hit the reset button there, red one. And we're going to press and hold it for about three seconds until the power light starts flashing, which now it's begun to do. So we'll give this another two minutes. We'll be right back. Okay, so let's give this a try again. We're going back to the 192.168 IP address. Doing admin, admin, and good. So that actually worked, the reset. So the next step to using this firmware that everyone should do before they start touching any settings is go to administration like I just did and we're going to go down to configuration and we're going to say restart or I should say restore default configuration but we're going to select erase all data and NVRAM memory. So let's go ahead and do that and bring up the clock. And there you have it. We successfully flashed Tomato Firmware by Shibi here on a Cisco E3000 by Linksys, or formerly known as Linksys. As always, folks, if you like what you see here, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, all those great things. It would be greatly appreciated. This is Dan from Southall Computing, and as always, folks, until the next time.